Williams Ecopedia, Volume 1, Topics in Sustainability from Arcology to Xeriscaping. Copyright, June 2010. This book is dedicated to all of the pioneers who have and still are working hard to lay the foundations for a sustainable future. With special thanks for all of the pioneers from Arcosanti and Lost Valley. Table of Contents, Appropriate Technology, page 8. <clears throat> Appropriate Technology. While sustainability seeks to reduce humanity's environmental impact, modern high technology tends to increase that impact. In general, high technology is resource consumptive, pollutive, expensive, and requires dependency on an outside agent to maintain properly, repair, or upgrade. Therefore, a new technological paradigm is needed, one that fits with the goals and principles of sustainability. When using ecological design, the design method for a sustainable future, one turns to a natural solution first seeing if the local natural environment can be harnessed to provide for one's needs. Depending on many different factors, not all challenges can be overcome by purely natural means. There are times when you will need a technological solution, some device or machine to accomplish the necessary task. When these times arise, one can then turn to find a solution made of appropriate technology. The phrase appropriate technology does not apply to any one particular device or set of devices, but rather is a new paradigm in finding technological solutions to meet your needs. Appropriate technologies are devices or machines that are at the do-it-yourself scale, meaning they can be built by the layman with easily available resources and techniques. To reduce fuel consumption, appropriate technology seeks to harness as much readily ecological energy as possible. Energy can be harvested from the local environment in the form of mechanical forces, people or animal power, sunlight, thermal forces, or wind, just to name a few. Appropriate technology is almost always small scale and meant for personal use or use by only a close few. One of my favorite examples of appropriate technology was made in South America where a seesaw was used to create a pump for a well. The children playing on the seesaw provides the mechanical energy to pump the water out of the well. Brilliant and appropriate. Appropriate technology is usually mechanical, not electrical in nature, though it is not necessarily exclusive of electricity. Examples include bicycle-powered blenders or washing machines, solar cookers, solar hot water heaters, water wheels, and windmills. By harnessing existing kinetic energy in the local environment, such as in wind or in your legs, mechanical systems can be operated without the need for electricity. Yes, photovoltaic systems that convert sunlight to electricity can be considered appropriate technology, However, it is the role of passive solar power that plays a greater role in appropriate technology. Passive solar is uses of solar energy that do not create electricity, but use the ambient heat energy in every sunbeam to accomplish a task. The most ubiquitous use of passive solar is for heating, such as in solar cookers, which heat food by channeling the sun's rays into an oven-like chamber. Being a do-it-yourself scale project, in other words, made by the people on the site who will use it, Appropriate technology is eminently repairable, maintained, and upgradable by the people on the site. This ensures that no matter what, the devices or machines can always be maintained without great expense or wait time. Appropriate technology should be made from local materials that follow the four R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, renew. This contributes to its nature as a do-it-yourself project, ensures that it can be maintained by the people who use it with readily available resources, and reduces our impact on the environment. Like permaculture, appropriate technology seeks to empower people to be able to design their own solutions that fit their unique situations. Like permaculture, what is most important about appropriate technology is not the specific devices themselves, but rather the user's understanding of the basic mechanical and ecological principles that underlie the specific devices. One should understand the basics of mechanics as well as the basics of passive solar and wind. One should have some basic mechanical skills, about on par with what it takes to know how to build and repair bicycles or some such. One should also study permaculture. Armed with this knowledge, each person would be able to design and create original devices using appropriate technology that most perfectly fit their situation, goals, and beliefs. The first recognized proponent of what we now call appropriate technology is considered to be the Mahatma Mohandas Gandhi. In his strategy of passive resistance to British oppression, Gandhi advocated the use of smaller technological systems appropriate to the lives of the Indian villagers. By empowering people with this new technological paradigm, the citizens of India were able to break many of the systems of oppression imposed upon them by the British Empire by taking advantage of their own skills and local ecological resources. 
Appropriate technology, as we envision it today, was popularized in the 70s by a man named E.F. Schumacher, the author, author of the highly influential book, Small is Beautiful, and creator of the concept of Buddhist economics. An economic advisor, Shoemaker proposed the shift towards local appropriate technology, which he called intermediate technology, as a means for developing countries to bolster themselves and for developed nations to have greater resilience to economic downturns. Since the 70s, hundreds of people the world over have made developments in appropriate technology. Some current favorites are pedal-powered blenders, pedal-powered sewing machines, pedal-powered washing machines, and passive solar food cookers. However, there are appropriate technology solutions for vast arrays of goals, including building construction and environmental maintenance, cooking, energy production, food preparation, food production, lighting, refrigeration, transportation, ventilation and air conditioning, water supply and treatment, even information and communication technology. While the sustainable future so many people envision may still have microchips and electricity and solid state electronics, it will also have a ubiquitous amount of appropriate technology carrying most of the load of day-to-day -day living with high-tech machines fewer and further between used only when necessary. The end. Thank you.